This is the Global Broadcasting Service, serving remote outposts since 1928. Hi, everyone. Welcome aboard the Walt Disney World Express Monorail. Caramba, we have something really big for you today. Welcome, foolish mortals. Now then, hang on to them hats and glasses, because this here's the wildest ride in the wilderness. This is the DBC Pod with Phil Schoen and Jason Dodge. Hey everybody, welcome to this week's spot. This week review of March 19th, 2022, recording two days after March 19th. Um, so we're here today with a special guest, Zach from Discord, a music life for me, who is the game master of Attraction Madness. Welcome, Zach. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me, guys. Good to see you both. Yeah, so this is going to be a lot of fun. So we, we've got a, a regular show, but in place of some of the other stuff, we're going to do a lot of the matchups that Zach has found and forced upon us in his bracket. <laughs> Um, a lot of people are being heartbroken as we go up through the brackets, much like people are heartbroken watching basketball on uh, on TV right now. Um, I'm going to apologize for the sound of my voice. I've had a cold the whole weekend, so I'm very nasally and congested, so excuse me for that one. Uh, but first, I want to ask everybody, there's rumors that the Magic Band Plus is coming out soon, which probably should have been here for the fifth, start of the 50th, but obviously things got delayed. Um Phil, I'm going to throw this to you first. What are you looking forward to in the Magic Band Plus? Because we don't know much. And would you pay for for one? And what would you think they are, actually, cost-wise? Unless something's yeah. come out in the last 48 hours that I haven't seen. <laughs> so, yeah. So, for, for folks who don't know about Magic Band Plus, obviously, is this the enhancement or the new version of Magic Bands. And they're going to have a lot more capabilities, potentially. They're actually – you're going to have to charge them. They have, like, an external charger and stuff like that. They're going to have color change lights. Uh, they're going to vibrate. They're going to interact with different things, um, including the 50th statues, the golden statues that are around. So that's definitely one reason people thought these would have been out for the 50th. Um, one of the things that I'm kind of excited about it, it says it has ge- gesture recognition. So it makes me think yep. about like playing the Wii or something like that when you kind of move your your arm around, things happen, or, or almost like uh, if you've been to like ha- the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, you know, doing the wand and things happen. So I think that could be pretty cool for it. Um, there has been a survey that went out. Um, I saw it, saw it a little while ago, and then I think it came out again. And one of the all about it saying, you know, what features are you excited about? Are you looking forward to it? Blah blah blah. But it mentioned about you know how would you feel about this price tag for it. And the price tags they put out there was for a solid color Magic Band Plus twenty nine ninety nine, so thirty dollars, or a graphic Magic Band Plus for forty nine ninety nine, so fifty dollars. Well, that's cheap. Yeah, and then I did see somebody say they think that might just be for the band part, not the puck part. I don't know. That seems a lot if you still have to buy the puck on top of it. So I don't know. Hmm. That was my reaction too. For all these things could, they could potentially do, if this is for an entire Magic Band Plus, that seemed cheaper than I was expecting. I was thinking, you know, more like seventy dollars, something like that. Um, but it, it did raise kind of an issue or a question amongst everybody: is what would you pay for one of these, knowing at least with what we know about what they can do, that they could really interact with things in the park and kind of potentially change the way you tour the parks, or at least you know, part of the time that you're there, especially if you're a regular visitor. So those prices, personally, I would definitely pay. At least I have one, um, depending on what my next trip was. I don't know if I'd be able to collect as many as I do of the <laughs> regular Magic Bands like I've done. Um, but yeah, so I think I would pay a little bit more. You know, I don't know if I'd pay like $100. Maybe I'd get one at that point if they really were doing a lot of things. But kind of made me wonder, what, what would you guys pay? Zach, what, are you looking forward to Magic Band Plus? And then how much do you think you would pay for one of those? I'll be honest, I haven't really read too much into it. So, um, but the concept intrigues me um, just with the different capabilities that I could do, like you said, interacting with the 50 or statues. Who knows what would happen later on if the 50 statues stay or if they will eventually leave after the celebration goes and what they would act, interact with then. Um, roughly to start, I mean, think about paying like 50 to 75 dollars for one just to see what it is and also if like i could get one with my favorite disney character on it so just different aspects like that but i'm intrigued not sure if i'll get one at first but definitely intrigued 
I'm looking forward to it just because it's something different, right? Yep. And I, I typically don't buy this gimmicky stuff, right? I don't go often enough to be like, uh, bringing out my Magic Band for my every six month trip type of thing, right? Because I'm I'm not local. Um, but I'm surprised because I'm just I'm reacting live right now. I didn't expect those price points. I was thinking a hundred dollars plus. Because I was mm-hmm. thinking more lines. I think we had this discussion. I don't know if it was like, um, you know, for 2022 podcast, like the predictions type of stuff. But I, I thought it might have had some capabilities like Fitbit, right? So it could track how many steps you're taking, where you are in the park. And then like, like you know how Google Maps says, this is your activity for all of 2021. It shows you where you've driven all year round type of thing. I thought they might be yeah. able to do that on like a, a Disney Parks map. Like here's, you know, here's where you've gone all day type of thing. I thought it would be really cool. Being a planner, being a guy that loves metrics, I would love – like the average time I waited in line type of thing. Like that would be really awesome to be able to track those kind of metrics. But the fact that they're only like 30 or $40 tells me that they're not going to have a lot of that capability at all. So they're going to be very simple units. And I'd still pay like the $30, 40 just because it might be sturdier than a typical Magic Band. Mine always breaks when I'm in, at Disney World after a week. Um, the, you know how you can rip it apart to make it fit a smaller wrist that tends to get, uh, falls apart on me. And I always get the, the, you know, the solid color. I don't know if they're the quote unquote cheap ones that are all made like that. I've never had a a $50 or $40 fancy one, but, um, I would love for it to do a lot of different stuff. I, I, what I really like is that it's probably going to, going to, um, take the place of all those like, um, in part games that you could play like the pirates game or gosh, what was the one that was being placed into Epcot? But got stopped oh yeah that was one thing that um well they had the perry the platypus game which was supposed to be changed over to ducktales which never DuckTales, happened yeah um i know on a recent uh disney dish podcast len testa was talking about it and he was in, in, insinuating that the the motion gesture stuff would let them yep. be used for things like the ducktales game or the perry the platypus so he was saying he thinks these are going to do more than people might think, but also that he's hearing the price point is going to be more than what that survey indicates. I would I think guess, so. I guess we'll find out. Yeah, I would, I would have to think so. Um, going to the DV, uh, DCI uh, numbers for the week, we're at 82.46. And I don't think anything's... No, that's the same changed. number it was last yes, week. So I guess familiar. nothing new this week. So unless, again, unless Matt's just slacking a little bit, I don't know. I don't know. Well, he had some very cool guests on his podcast this week. I haven't got a chance to. Uh, actually, I don't think he published it yet, but he he announced it on on Twitter. So maybe that that has uh, something to do with it. Check out his podcast whenever it pops up in your feeds. All right, so Phil, your traditional spot, right? Yeah. We don't do news and rumors anymore on the show. We just do topics. But today's topics is news and rumors. So. <laughs> That's reliving the glory days, I guess, right? Yeah, I guess so. I was. It just felt like a lot had come up over the last few weeks, and I thought it would be good to uh, update people who maybe aren't keeping track of everything, but also just get our thoughts on that. And I thought it was great timing with Zach coming on to get some of his thoughts too. So one of the big stories that people were talking about was that there's new enhancements coming to the boardwalk area. Uh, for those of you who haven't been around there in a while, you know, ESPN zone hasn't been open. They they did start bringing back some of the entertainment and stuff like that, but it just hasn't been, I think, as lively as it has been in the past. But they announced that new enhancements will be coming uh, uh, into 2023, I guess, is when everything will be open. But they're talking about they're going to have, I think, update the rooms at the boardwalk, redo the lobby design of the boardwalk hotel. They're going to update the coffee bar. Um, but the big thing is coming to – the actual boardwalk area so not the resort but the the area is that where espn zone was they're going to be putting in a new restaurant that is the cake bake shop by gwendolyn rogers um i know there's already a location of in indianapolis that i know some people have been to and and seem to like it but it kind of created some controversy in that it seems like you know like they do afternoon tea and and have like quiches and tons of cakes and stuff like that and they have swans everywhere and it just didn't scream like jersey boardwalk or whatever so um you know it kind of just made people think like does this fit is this going to change the vibe or whatever obviously it's always good for when work's done and new things are coming and stuff like that but i think people are going to miss having just you know kind of a sports bar and a place they can just grab something to eat so i don't know did have you guys seen about this any any thoughts on it what do you think zach I've read into it and I've seen what's coming. Um, the food in the atmosphere doesn't necessarily pertain to what I like, but I could see how it could definitely bring in others to that area that may want to try something new. Um, I'd be definitely excited to try it. Um, 
but it's not necessarily my cup of tea, at least with what I've read. I am very much a sports person, so I'm kind of a little sad to see ESPN Club go, but definitely right now, especially during this time, having a place with a bunch of TVs where you could go watch March Madness. <laughs> but because um, I know that's been a lot of topics in years past with sports fans always wondering where they could go find their favorite sporting event and watch it on TV with a fun atmosphere as well. Um, so now it's a little bit difficult to find one of those places. But the, the last time I was at Disney World and I wanted to find sports was – this was probably – five or six years ago, and I wanted to watch a New York Giants um, preseason football game. It was like the first one of the year. And we were down there, and I couldn't find anywhere to to watch it. And I found a random place at Disney Springs that was kind of showing it. I, and like It was like Red Zone or something else. It was like showing glimpses of it. And I was like, wow, I shouldn't try this hard to find like a, a football <laughs> game with all these bars, uh, bars around. So definitely a place like that would probably be beneficial for Disney, especially since they host a lot of cheerleading events and all this other stuff that's kind of down there. A lot of teams go down and do like kind of vacations down there and stuff like that. So that would be cool. As far as the boardwalk is concerned, I've never actually been there. So I, I really don't have like a, a dog in this fight, so to speak. But um, it doesn't make sense to me. It feels like it needs to be at like the Grand, Grand Floridian type of kind of styling. And you know, when I think boardwalk being a, a Jersey guy, right, I, I think a little boardwalk – Funnel cake, cotton candy, the ocean, um, crowds of people running up and down, you know, bars and games and, you know, like the stuff like that's in like um, Dino Land USA, like all those like cheapo like carnival games. But like on the boardwalk, I remember them being lined up for like miles. Like that's kind of what I see, just lights and like almost like a carnival atmosphere without actually being a carnival. So I, I don't quite get where they're going, and maybe they're just trying to upscale everything, I guess. I don't know. But yeah, yeah, that's the all boardwalk I got. area for me is one of my favorite places to even walk on Walt Disney World property. It's a great break from the hustle and bustle of Epcot while you're going around the World Showcase and trying to get to every single food booth during the festivals. Um, but it's just a great walk around the lake there, mm -hmm. especially as you could also walk by the Yacht and Beach Club. Uh, it's just beautiful, especially at sunset. It's just a beautiful area to just take a break and sit down and relax. Um, in terms of the lobby area of the boardwalk, though, I'm actually excited as I think that lobby area has or is in need of a renovation of some sort. So definitely excited to see what Disney does with that. I don't think they released any concept art for that, did they? No, not for the, the lobby or anything. I think they might have for the coffee shop area, but not they hadn't really given too much details for the actual Boardwalk Resort updates. Okay. Yeah, I've seen a lot of comments of people similar, like saying, yeah, it, it definitely could use some updates. However, I know there's also some unique elements to it. You know, like they have those two chairs with like that kind of are scary and stuff like that. That people, I guess that the people are hoping what kind of makes it unique and that they have nostalgia for stays with the refresh that they don't totally kind of neuter it and, and kind of make it just generic. So I guess we'll see what they do. What's next, Will? So the next topic is also related to DVC and building things and stuff like that. But uh, news came out that the Spirit of Aloha dinner show, uh, which was the Luau show over at the Polynesian, it was kind of in a, a like an amphitheater type area in between the Polynesian and the Grand Floridian. It hasn't been open since COVID and it will not be opening ever again. Um, instead, they are going to be building a new tower, a DVC Disney Vacation Club Villas coming to the Polynesian Village Resort. So this is gonna be a separate building built kind of next to where the Polynesian Village is that will be um, full of more DVC properties that Disney can sell um, that are part of the Polynesian. It looks like it's gonna have um, like one one bedroom and two two bedrooms, mostly like those types, versus I think a lot of what's currently at the Polynesian is studios. So obviously, people want to buy DVC at the Polynesian and stuff like that. I think mm -hmm. the they're they're having the new ones are going on sale if they're not on sale already at the Grand Floridi, and people want to be you know on the monorail loop. So it totally makes sense. It also created a lot of controversy because the concept art they released for it doesn't really look like the Polynesian. Um, I think it looks fine. Yeah, I think 
and I'm interested in everybody else's take. I feel like people went way too far with it with their negative comments about it. I see people saying, oh, it looks like a mid-price Hampton Inn or something like that. I'm like, you guys stay at much nicer Hampton Inns than <laughs> you, I've You ever haven't been, been to Hampton like... in the middle of Iowa before. <laughs> like, <well. laughs> um, it does look a little, but it just looks more like kind of streamlined and kind of modern, um, clean lines that they're doing with a lot of their styles. So mm-hmm. it's, I think it's just the modern style, but it does have some of these cascading um, floral things that actually, if you go back and I tweeted this out, um, there was an original design for the Polynesian back in 1969 that actually had sort of a pyramid tower and had some of those effects. So they kind of tied it back to that. I think it'll be nice. I get why people are saying it's going to, it might look, it might be in stark contrast to like sort of the log, you know, the long buildings and stuff like that of the Polynesian. But I also feel like after a couple of years, nobody's going to notice. It'll just feel like it's been there forever. But I guess we'll, I guess it's another thing we have to wait and see, but you know, that's a big change. You know, a lot of people I think liked the spirit of Aloha It was something unique. It was more entertainment that we're at resorts that it seems like that's getting cut back and not being, not coming back. So obviously, you know, a lot of people are joking that, you know, Mr. MBA says, you know, we can make a lot more money off selling DVC than we can tickets to the spirit of Aloha. So that's what we did, but I don't know. People want to be there. People want to buy them. You know, we're seeing resale for DVC prices seem astronomical right now. So it totally makes sense that they're going to try to fit in more more DVC near the Magic Kingdom. Look, if I was Chapek, and I'm definitely not, um, I would be trying to build – once once we have like – there's a cash flow and they can start like construction on new stuff. I would be building all around the monorail. Just like wherever I could fit structurally, I, I would start building. And th- this makes sense. And the, the, the pictures don't look terrible. I mean like they have – it's very green – Everything else like that. So we'll see how much they kind of try to blend it in with some, you know, palm trees in nature and, and the, the wooded textures and stuff like that. People love staying at the Polynesian. Mm-hmm. So now there's going to be more availability. So it's going to be right there. I mean, like you could walk over to Trader Sam's. You could walk over and watch the fireworks. You could, I mean, you could still do all of those things. Um, I don't know how popular that, that show was. I know a lot of people loved it, but like how many people truly – saw it every single day type of right. thing other than the diehards that oh that love that hotel and that's like their home you know away from home yeah, type yeah. of thing which i i grieve with you because everybody has a favorite thing that tends to go away over time but um i, I mean I, I think this is a net positive honestly i mean maybe this will allow you know this will be more expensive on the dvc rental point chart but then maybe the other parts of the pollination might get a little bit cheaper i don't know <laughs> maybe, maybe just an all scars zach what do you think is this is this a clash in your, your point of view or just something like Okay, whatever. Let me move on. For those that know me, know how much entertainment means to me at Disney. Um, It's not uncommon for me to go to Disney and see entertainment over going on attractions. Um, That is usually my cup of tea. Um, So when I first heard that the Spirit of Aloha dinner show was going away, I... I'll admit I was a little bit upset, despite actually only seeing the show once. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, I'll be, I'll, I'll back you up. Whenever I see entertainment going away, I'm always sad because it's not being replaced with anything. From from that point of view, I'm totally with you on that. But dive Correct. into the specifics on the specific show, you know, mm-hmm. it doesn't affect. I'm, I'm uh, sorry for interrupting. Oh no! Uh, so, what kind of got me was the announcement of the dinner show was said to be going away and then literally an hour later is when disney announced the dvc tower we're like so that is why (laughs) um my opinion on the tower itself i wish they could have made it a little bit smaller as it looks like it's about nine to ten stories tall it is big um when the rest of the buildings at the resort are two stories tall, maybe looking to be at some point three or four with how the roofs are designed and different things. Yeah, I think it's set up with in the middle, it'll be about seven or eight stories. And then on the end, it'll be about five or six. So it is a little bit of a pyramid. So it's not, okay. you know, it's not like 10, 12 stories, but it is a lot taller. Than and the, that. these are only like renderings from a, from an artist, yes, right? The final, absolutely. This concept only, it certainly could change. If, if this turns into a monstrosity, 
right, that just is like a sore thumb sticking up, I'll be the first one to criticize it. Hopefully it's not the case because these are iconic areas of the parks, yeah. right? Uh, people are – everybody's seeing them from the monorail. Everybody is seeing them from the ferries, et cetera, et cetera. So, I mean, it's highly visible. It's not like the Riviera that's kind of tucked away there that maybe that you'll notice it as you're going on the Skyliner but for thinking nothing of it as you're going to and from some other places. Um as, a, as an aside, my, my mother, who just came back from Disney World, um, she went to Topolino's Terrace, and she said, Riviera is beautiful, but it's just a giant, normal hotel. Like, it didn't have a Disney feel to it other than the cool decorations and the pictures and stuff like that that they have inside. So um, she's definitely not a fan of just having a tower in the middle of, like, a Disney property. She, yeah. she, she's more of a traditionalist where she's like, I like the two or three, four-story type of resorts. It feels more resorty, I guess. But no, I we'll will see. say too that uh, the Polynesian is my favorite resort actually on Disney property. Uh, my parents do own DVC at the Polynesian actually. And my first thought also when this was announced was will this be a wilderness lodge type of style where they sell Boulder Ridge and Copper Creek separately? Or. Is it going to be the tower available to everyone that owns a Polynesian already? Oh, not only that, are is this one of like the new style DVC where you where there's no backwards compatibility, so to speak? With like, if you buy in here, like you're stuck at this resort in the Riviera. I don't know if they're going to group those two together or, or what have you, but uh, I don't food for thought, I guess. Yeah, I don't think they came out with too many of those details. I think the one speculation I saw was that it was just going to be merged in with the existing Poly DVC, but I don't think mm. that's cl uh, clear or not. But yeah, definitely a concern. We'll see. Yeah, I didn't know. I know, Bill, you mentioned that it might be like the one or two bedroom style because all the Polynesian DVC style right now is deluxe studios or the bungalows. Yeah. So it'd be nice to get some of those one or two bedroom options there as definitely having those washer and dryers in the rooms are very much beneficial sometimes. Yeah, for sure. My family will never fit in the studio anyway, so so having an option that I can dream about. I mean, I'm not dreaming <laughs> about the bungalows because I'm not that, that uh, dreaming that big, but maybe a two-bedroom at some point. <laughs> and the last news topic is I, I sort of grouped a whole bunch of things together. I kind of thought, you know, you know, maybe we could go back to some of our 2022 predictions or just seeing how things are moving along because there has been a lot of either updates or rumors or just seeing more work being done in certain areas. So, you know, Disney did come out, for example, and say Victoria and Alberts is going to reopen this year. Some speculation that it'll be in the next couple months so that they can be up for winning, a, I think, a Michelin star, mm -hmm. which, which is what they're hoping to get. Um, seeing a lot of work done in Epcot on the Connections Cafe, having lighting testing, and they're moving around some of the construction walls and stuff like that. There was the rumor of Guardians uh, of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind opening by Memorial Day weekend. Um, we know the Moana Journey of Water. You know, they really seem to be moving along with construction on that. So finally. I don't know if I, you know, I was kind of going to turn this over almost like a prediction is like, when do we think all this is going to open? Um, you know, knowing that October 1st is the 40th anniversary of Epcot, are they, you know, really trying to push ahead to get sort of that whole middle area open by then? Or, you know, are they going to push this into, push this off? I mean, I think, you know, Guardians is going to be relatively soon. We know that it's going to be springtime, if not Memorial Day. Yep. And everything I've heard was they want the new cafe open in open for when guardians opens, but kind of just also the, the rest of the construction in, in Epcot. What, what do you guys think? When, when do you think that'll be done? Zach, you want to take a guess on this one or you want me to go first? I'll take a guess on the cafe. I think it will definitely be open around that Memorial day time frame that we are hearing for guardians of the galaxy cosmic rewind, as we all know how that post got deleted and rewarded. But, um, with the cafe, I'm just excited for that to open so I could hopefully walk through the middle of the park again instead of walking all the way around. Yeah. Um, in terms of Moana, I'm not expecting it until at least 2023. Sometime in 2023. See, I, I, I think they're going to make my prediction. I, I don't know what I said back in January. It's a, a quarter of the year has gone by. <laughs> Um, but I could see them pushing that that be open in some fashion uh, by the fall. 
Maybe maybe they don't have the topiaries or the uh, the greenery up and everything else, but I think you'll be able to walk through some water or something else. So I think their main goal is by the time summer is over, since now summer is more of a dead period than anything else, um, that they're going to want people walking through that during their, their big oct- end of September, beginning of October, like rush of people. They're going to want all those construction walls down because I think they're they're sick and tired of having that criticize, uh, criticism about them being tossed around. So I think that's – I think those construction walls are more of a priority than getting Tron and the railroad back up, if you ask me. Yep. That's my opinion. No, I agree with that. I mean, I know we joke a lot about how, you know, Disney didn't do that much for the 50th anniversary and stuff, and so maybe they won't really do much for Epcot's 40th, but – I still think they don't want the center of the park to be a construction yeah. zone for the celebration of the 40th of the park that the whole Florida project was was done for, you know, was mm-hmm. was that guy was based on. So, but I guess we'll see. It's just nice to see things I think progressing forward. Um, speaking of that, and and that was a nice segue, Jason. It's like you're a professional. I am um, there was a push pull testing being reported on the Tron vehicles over in Magic Kingdom, and we know that the canopy is coming along nicely. Obviously, still a lot of work to done out front, but that's definitely progressing forward. And I'm feeling like it might open by the end of this year. I guess we'll see. Um, certainly not until the next fiscal year, which starts October 1st. But, you know, maybe it could be uh, November or December opening. And we also saw them doing some testing of the Magic Kingdom Railroad. So I, I know that's something that a lot of people have been waiting for. Even if, you know, Tron's not open, I've been watching all the bio reconstructs photos where he's got, look, here's where they're building the tunnel and you can see the mm-hmm. other end of the tunnel now and stuff like that. So hopefully they can get that moving and, and uh, the, the railroad, cause that that's a, the sound of the railroad going by is something that's been missing from magic kingdom for way too long. Uh, I'm a hundred percent on the sound of the railroad. I'm, I miss, I miss that. Like I haven't heard it since in five years, since 2017 is the last time I went with a railroad operational and yep. I miss it. And then I, I don't, I don't, I don't know about the the state of Tron. We have no idea what's going on inside that building. I don't know if it's still just a shell or they're they're putting up the 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 um, the elements of of the of the show, I guess, inside. But uh, it's it's good to see that they're testing those things. I think it was what was the first time we heard testing of. Uh, guardians was it like six to eight months ago that they were testing vehicles yeah so it was back in november that they were doing the push pull testing in in guardians and then they were estimating that it would open memorial day weekend so it was about six months out yep which would put us into i think i timed it out it would be like mid-september for tron so even if you give it another month or two that's you know october november so i mean i'm excited about i mean everybody knows i I have total disdain for Tomorrowland. I mean, with all the love, I love tomorrow. I love everything about Magic Kingdom. But if I mean, if we have a pecking order, right? Um, one thing I, I can't wait for is the the lights and the sounds and the the dynamic elements of that ride, adding to that corner of the park. It's gonna. I think. I think what what's gonna look awesome is it's gonna look uh, as a. It's gonna look have a great backdrop for mm-hmm. um, the speedway. And that's what I'm kind of excited for. It's it's going to add more depth to that that area of the park. Uh, Zach, do you think I think we're going to get this by the end of the year? Professional opinion by you? My professional opinion would be, I would hope for a holiday opening, late November. Okay. Um, not sure by Thanksgiving, but late November. Um, if not early 2023, would be I guess. I think early 2023 was like the latest it would open, right? Like if we get it this year, that would be quote unquote early by all yeah. the influencers Just, uh, guessing what it, when it was going to come out. Because I, I think historically we all know right after New Year's that January, early February timeframe tends to be the slow season here at Walt Disney World mm-hmm. if there is even a slow season anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> but, so it may be like a good thing for Disney to maybe be like, hi, we're going to open Tron and try and push people to that time frame of the year. But I don't think anybody's planning trips just for Tron. I mean, they're, like if they heard it's coming out that week, you might get you might get like people in the surrounding states in the south playing like a, a, a trip down there for sure, but I don't think you're going to get excessive travel outside, other than outside the people that were going to go anyway, right? 
yeah. know, type of thing. But if, if I'm 100% in agreement, I have missed the railroad in yes. Magic Kingdom for forever. And I'm just waiting for the day I see that steam train roll right in front of Magic Kingdom again. Yeah. I always joke that whenever people are like, oh, this happened and Walt Disney would be rolling over in his grave. I'm like, I think he'd be more upset that the railroad's been down for over a thousand days. Yeah. Well, that it, well that in, in one ride taking 30 years to make. I mean, that's yeah. unacceptable, too. I, I, I mean, like, he, he was, he's, if anything, Walt was always a man that got things done quickly. Even, like, right when the railroad closed, though, what I liked is they still had the steam trains out at the stations. And I'm not mm -hmm. 100% sure the reason why they took them back or if it was... Just, I know they were doing some track work, even in, in Adventureland and stuff like that. So I think that might be why it stopped for a while. But they, I think they could be back by now. But they haven't been. But maybe that's what they're testing. At least now. at the uh, storybook yeah. circus mm -hmm. station, where that's where it's been seen testing lately. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Looking forward to that. Do we got anything All else right. on, on rumors? And uh, the only other thing is, is people had been talking about. Well, when will after hours events return? Mm -hmm. um, we did have a Moonlight Magic happening over at Epcot oh, okay. recently, yeah. and they've also announced that H2 Glow is coming back to Typhoon Lagoon. So um, we're still waiting, I think, for full-on villains event, although at the Moonlight Magic, they did have a lot of rare characters out. So I think that was pretty exciting for the, the DVC members. They were able to go for that. So, so some cool pictures. Yeah, so I think you know they're not full-on you know, after hours like everyone's looking for, but at least it's a, a step in the right direction, I think. So like, like we've talked a lot, it's always nice to see things come back. I'm actually going to the next one in a week. Excellent. Oh, cool. Take some pictures. Head out. We'll do. Awesome. <laughs> I'll definitely post to the Discord. So there you go. Excellent. So the the, the next topic, I kind of this all kind of ties together. Um, there was a CNBC article that was posted. Was that um, was that today or did that come out today or yesterday, Phil? Was that I forget. It came what the, out uh, yesterday. It was posted by Alex Sherman, who's been working on the piece for uh, CNBC. So right. he posted it yesterday. And it's basically. I'm not gonna bore you guys with the whole article, but it was basically the dynamic between Iger and Chapek and how they were um, drastically different people. And Chapek was seen as the person that was going to take his place. And then after a certain point, they stopped talking to each other and communication was a little awkward, even though Chapek or Iger was taking, you know, three years to actually leave the job. And the whole thing everybody knows about, right? We don't need to tell the story about, you know, the changeover, and of course, with COVID and kind of complicating everything else like that. Uh, but they had some interesting theories that kind of ties into some of the discussions that we've had that I found interesting outside of the pol political squabble um, was the unifying of technology under JPEG and the streamlining of things. So, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll kick it off. Then. Phil, what do, you, what, do you, what do you make of it then with um, – I mean, I think it's a good idea, right? Like that makes sense from a business point of view. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, just even thinking about where I work, we've always had things like let's get people who can handle reporting or IT and let know that take care of that so that the business people can just focus on whether it's selling new deals or selling cars or whatever it is, like let them focus on that. I think that all makes sense. The one challenge or I guess what people maybe aren't are worried about is that a lot of this seems to be set up based on the business side. Like how can business decisions be made? So like even the example you gave about turning red going on to Disney Plus, that was more of a business decision versus an entertainment decision. And I think people are a little bit worried about, you know, maybe it should be split up more by who's in charge of different entertainment areas, not necessarily so much focused on the business side. But I mean, everything, they always need to go hand in hand. It's just, you know, I guess we'll see. You know, we want to make sure that the creative people are able to be creative. Yeah, I mean, I'll throw this one back at you, Phil, though. What if this is a way for us to be able to get Encanto in the parks right as the thing hits, you know, in the top of the billboards instead of waiting five months for it to get some kind of content because it has to go yeah. through park ops and then Imagineering and then five different people and entertainment and all this other stuff. Like, I think that's one thing. Disney's slow, right? They have so many different not only so many different acquisitions and different companies under one umbrella, they've got a lot of legacy systems in there that are still stuck in the analog days and stuff like that. Yeah. So I think, you know, if anything, if anything, Chapek could be remembered if he, if let's say he's, he's let go or whatever, I'm not saying that he should be, but let's say he is hopefully because Iger started doing this too. And Chapek's been really going 
fast at this. He could be the one that's really organized Disney the right way to survive another hundred years. And that's kind of a thing that he wants to be. He that's that's one of the sayings. It's like you know, um, this is the company's been here for a hundred years. Let's let's be in a good place for the next, and not be a legacy company type of thing. Yep. Now, in terms of like you're saying, like in Camp in Kanto, trying to get the park into the parks quicker. <laughs> I remember when Frozen first came out, I believe Disney rushed as much as they could into those parks, anything Frozen. Yeah. They, uh, yeah, I know they had the characters there early, but then they didn't know it was going to be such a hit, but they rushed having that. Yeah, I, forget if it was called, I forget if it was called Summer of Frozen, but they had like, you know, different things going on in the summer. I think they had like an ice skating rink and things like that. Like it was kind of nothing major, but yeah, they, they rushed to getting in. And we're not maybe seeing that as, done as efficiently with with Encanto but I guess my goal is though I hope that if the decision can be made faster great but I hope it's made faster because it it's better for the guest and the park experience not because just because they think they can make money off it but. well I mean ultimately if they're making a lot of money on it it should be because guests love it and it's popular yeah right mm -hmm. so I mean they, do oh, yeah, go that's why I said they should go hand in hand yeah they should um, it's when you start cutting things and you raise the price of a soda five dollars and then that's yeah. You're making more money, but you're irritating the hell out of everybody. Um, all right, um, Zach, I don't want to waste any more time. We've been here 40 minutes, and we're now going to talk about why we brought you on, which is Attraction Madness. What what motivated you to start doing this? This this basically came out of the blue. I thought, and I was like, this is awesome. Let's move forward. So, um, what what inspired you to organize this? Well, one morning I woke up and I messaged Phil, and I was like, Hey, Phil. Would this be fun? And Phil was like, sure. So I literally spent about two or three hours that morning coming up with different ideas, thoughts, seeing how this could possibly break down. And one thing, like I know we do the attractionality on Discord, mm -hmm. which focuses one attraction per week. And I thought it would just be fun with the spirit of March coming around and the NCAA tournaments being in basketball for both the men's and the women's out there um, happening right now that, you know, what would happen if we faced off 72 Disney attractions from Disneyland and Walt Disney World up against each other? <laughs> So we had we had a starting off round where you got some wild cards in there, um, and then we had several rounds at this top sixty four. And there weren't really any surprises, right? I, I think you could have easily blind picked those right quickly, and you would probably just went with the the more obvious answer, and you would have won. Like I think almost all of them. There were no surprises. Yeah, um, there were some matchups that I was very upset that happened, and yes, I was the one that could that made the seeds so well, well let's dive into that like how did you originally seed everything at least the top what was it 58 like you left at the bottom six up to like a wild card so how did how did you rank them initially um so i thought of different things one how popular they are two um how long they've been around three are they deemed more of a classic attraction and four how long are their wait times usually okay uh, just um, different aspects. Um, you know, I know there's not any perfect system with this. Um, I'm actually using this system right now to help seed for next year. All right. If you would let me do it again next oh, year. Oh, absolutely. No, I've caused quite the stir on Discord. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people, so. Well, these are the stirs we like, though, on Discord when it's like debating attractions and things like That's that. The fun so part. It's, it's all good. Yeah, it's, it's fun, fun discussion. Yeah, especially with today's results that I am not going to completely say why. So well, what what are some of the matchups in the last couple of days? Because we're doing this once a day. Um, what are the things that either surprised you or you were sad about the, the way they, they resulted? So let's let's go over a couple of those. Do you have a couple of those in mind? Um, I know you mentioned it last week. Uh, Spaceship Earth versus the railroads, both at Disneyland and Walt Disney World. I actually thought that the railroad was going to take out Spaceship Earth, and Spaceship Earth won twenty to eight. So that surprised that, me. It did. Um, we just, talked about that last week, Phil. I think right. That's the one that I, mm -hmm. I kind of I saw. Disney. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to look through here. Uh, Tiki Room edging out Test Track. 
11 to 9. See, I, I I vote Tiki Trick, but then of course, was it Tiki? Was the Tiki was Tiki Room today or yesterday? And then there's their second up round of voting. Um, I don't recall. I think it was yesterday. And I know that lost. Yes, it did. And it made me very sad. <laughs> yeah, the final. Yeah, that was uh, yeah, that was yesterday. I I can I'm, I'm pulling that up now. It lost to Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, twenty six to four. So it, it did lose to a. Uh, Pretty popular new attraction. And that attraction is very good. I mean, like, yeah. if, if I didn't have nostalgia and, like, love for, like, some old Disney stuff, I would have voted for Mickey and Minnie's. The, yeah. one, the one thing I quickly realized within our group of Discord here is how much everyone likes Walt Disney World. As I am from Disneyland, that's where I grew up for the majority of my life. So seeing a lot of these Disneyland attractions go is making me a little sad, but I completely understand. It just – I, I, I mean, imagine the vast majority of the people on Discord have not been to Disneyland and that they're just voting for what they know at this point, which will make the later rounds more interesting because now we're, we're people's favorites are going to start but bumping heads against each other, I think. Uh, Phil, have you seen anything? You've got some stuff in front of you. Is there any any close ones right now? I haven't I haven't checked today's the results of today's scores since earlier this morning. Uh, so there there is one really close one. The voting has closed, and uh, Kilimanjaro Safari has eighteen votes, and Big Thunder Mountain Railroad has eighteen votes. So that obviously was a clear tie, and that's definitely a matchup of two great attractions right you know i kind of Lucky mentioned earlier like at the end of the day only one attraction is not going to lose right so um there's going to be these, these kind of battles i mean even the one above it it wasn't that close of a, a match but it was flight of passage versus peter pan's flight like peter pan's flight is like some people's favorite ride right so um it's just going to get tough as you pick some of these these great rides and it's really interesting i think when you get some of these classic attractions that have so much nostalgia and are kind of like what you think of when you think of you know, a Disney park yep. versus some of the newer rides that are amazing, but maybe don't have that, that nostalgia for them, which one wins out. But, but yeah, the Safari versus Big Thunder is kind of, you know, obviously two very different attractions, two attractions I think are great in for what they are. Um, and obviously you can see the voting was close. So um, I know Zach is the, the tiebreaker vote because he doesn't vote in the initial rounds. So we'll see where that, that goes. Well, I might, we know I where might it's have going. A, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For those that know, but I'm not going to say why. <laughs> yes. Um, um, hop on Discord and maybe you'll, f you'll figure it out. And, pretty much. Yeah. Um, well, here, here's the one that surprised me today. Um, Splash Mountain over Small World by a very large margin. Yeah, I'd say the margin surprised me. Not so much that Splash won, but... 32 um, to 4. Yeah. That's and, a surprising. I mean, it doesn't surprise me, but it surprises me. I mean, I, I, you'd think there'd be some more small world stands kind of floating around Discord voting for, like, the old school ride. But I guess Splash Mountain is still an old school ride that, you know, people people want to hang on to it before it changes into Tiana's. Uh, yeah. Well, that one was, I, I was always a little tough because, like, I think it's such a great ride system. Obviously, I'm supportive of redoing the theme. So I didn't necessarily want to reward the theme, but it's such a good ride system. Um, and while I enjoy it, it's a small world. Um, I, I, if I could only pick one to ride, it's definitely Splash Mountain. So. Yep, I'm with really you on that one. Her. Those listening and don't know, uh, we've actually finished a round of 64. We're in the last 32 teams right now in the third of four days of voting for the round of 32. So one more day before the Sweet 16 begins here. Uh, matchup yesterday that I thought was rather interesting just because it's how it ended up with the seeds is we had the Battle of Galaxy's Edge being Rise of the Resistance versus Millennium uh, Falcon right. this run. What did you vote, Phil, on that one? I voted for Rise. Um, I think that's just an amazing attraction when it works. <laughs> um, uh, I do think Small Goods Run is really fun. I think sometimes people get too down on that one and think it's just, you know, people like star tours is better and things like that. Like I think smugglers run for what it is, is really fun. And I think it's a, it's, it's a pretty innovative ride. I think they should switch it out and have multiple missions and stuff like that to keep it fresh. I agree with that. Um, so I think it, you know, it could be better. I think it's good. Um, but it's, it's, it's definitely falls short of rise of the resistance, which is, I voted again, for the when Falcon. it works is incredible. I oh, voted really? for Falcon. Yeah, of course. Um, I love awesome. Rise, and it, it, it's great from the queue to the ending. Right? It's it's mm -hmm. innovative. It's amazing. Um, 
But nothing beats me being able to take a video of my wife and six-year-old son at the at the cockpit driving the Millennium. My wife barely knowing what Star Wars is with no <laughs> ability in video games whatsoever. And my son trying his hardest to play video games because he loves video games. And taking a video of then my son pulling down the lever to go into light speed and go off, even though he's crashed the damn ship five million times. Um, that's a memory that's going to sit with me forever. <laughs> it's just it's just one of those things. Um, and I'm a big Star Wars nerd, as everybody knows. But like, I I, I don't I don't know how you could beat that experience. And I, and I think I'm the target audience because that's exactly what people what the Imagineers wanted to happen was that exact story, right? That's what it was mm-hmm. built for. Um, I mean, it's close. I think it's like one A and one B, right? It's um, I mean that that should have, that could have easily have been well, maybe not easily, but that could have been like the you know the championship you know two attractions going on it's because they're seated that wasn't going to happen. But like those are the caliber of attractions I expect to be there in the top four. So we'll see. Really uh, quick, the uh, Millennium Falcon. Have any of you either experienced Chewbacca mode? No. No, I have not. I've I've heard of it, but I have not experienced it. We, like, I mean, I've always had small kids trying to pilot the Falcon or, or shoot things or hit the engineering. So, we were doing our best not to, you know, die, let alone trying to do Chewbacca. <laughs> There's no achievement, you know, in my family with this attraction. <laughs> never get it. So, but also yesterday, actually, I think we had the closest boat that ended up not being in a tie. I know Phil struggled with this one quite a lot, and that was Slinky Dog Dash versus Spaceship Earth, which ended at Slinky Dog Dash defeating Spaceship Earth by a score of 18 votes to 17 votes. And I can only say that that Spaceship Earth only lost because it needs a refurb. If it actually had a planned refurb and people exp- it was open by this point, people would have voted for Spaceship Earth on that one. Yeah, I, almost I, I did. It did pain me to vote for Slinky Dog. Or I shouldn't say pain me to vote for Slinky Dog. It pained me to not vote for Spaceship Earth. Yeah. Um, but it is because it needs a refurb. And I did try to separate, I guess, the actual ride versus you know like the beacons of light and the magic and the actual you know sphere. Um, but I just decided at the end of the day, my my family, if we could only go on one, it's it's Slinky Dog Dash, and the the happiness my youngest daughter has on that ride, I couldn't <laughs> I couldn't not vote for it. So, but it, it it was a little painful. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, another one that also surprised me um, that was a result from was it yet no two days ago was um, also the Rise versus Falcon was the Haunted Mansion versus Space Mountain. I'm surprised that that wasn't closer. Um, in Haunted Mansion defeated Space Mountain on a score twenty nine to six, I believe, if I'm reading this correctly. I would have I would have thought that would have been closer because those are two iconic, you know, attractions, and everybody went for Haunted Mansion. I mean, I was one of them that went for Haunted Mansion, but um, that surprised me quite a bit. I'm just curious as well. Um, is anyone surprised that Toy Story Midway Mania be- defeated Seven Force Mine Train? I, I missed that one. Yeah, I was a little surprised. I voted for Seven Dwarfs. I know, like some people voted against Seven Dwarfs because they're they don't fit in it very well, um, and just they just have more fun doing Story Tour Midway Mania. Other people commented, you know, the weight that Seven Dwarfs get isn't warranted for the quality of the ride. I still just think it's a very good ride for what it is. It's kind of a fun, perfect coaster for kids. It's got a fun inside. So I voted for that. Like. And this isn't to bash Midway Mania. I enjoy that quite a bit, but it wasn't like I didn't have to think that hard for that one. Yeah, so that, that, that is fact that surprising. It, that, it, that it lost pretty handily was was a bit surprising. I mean, Seven Doors has got an awesome soundtrack that gets you go when you're when you're heading up into the ride. I mean, it, I think it's I think it's unfair to the attraction the fact that there's a wait. There's some people factored the wait time to get onto the attraction. I think you yeah, have to take that off. Yeah. I don't know how much they did, but I think it's just kind of like, well, there's always a wait, so I, I don't ride it very often. Or, whatever, you know, like that kind of just, they just don't sure. do it every trip. Whereas, you know, I'm certainly more likely to do Midway Media more times a trip than I am Seven Dwarfs. But I guess. Go with that. I don't know. All right. Before we that's, move. That's why these are fun, right? Yeah. Well, that, it's things, a good yeah. discussion. Uh, before we wrap up, Zach, anything else that we might have forgotten that we didn't talk about? Game master of Attraction Madness. <laughs> um, for those watching and listening, I am sorry if your favorite attraction <laughs> <laughs> But um, 
I hope everyone has been having fun with this. I've certainly been having fun watching all the drama going on <laughs> on the score. Well, Especially the drama I created today, trying to make sure one attraction won. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want to say um, I'm, I'm definitely not the only one. We appreciate the work and effort that went into putting this yeah. together every single day, tallying the scores and putting up the results and getting ready for the next day. I think it's it's awesome and. Uh, Thank you and for you, keeping people engaged. It's, it's yeah. It's just, I think you organized it really well. You've been really on top of posting them and stuff like that. So it's not to uh, make your swell your head or anything. But I think no, you're doing a good job of course not. I try. My sleep schedule is not the best. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, it comes up randomly in the morning, and then sometimes I miss that ten o'clock time. Right <laughs> oh well, we forgive you for that for sure. <laughs> Uh, that being said, everybody, um, we're going to save some other items for next week's show. Um, Phil and I, we have to discuss when we're going to do it because I'm not going to be here on Sunday and Monday, so we might have an early podcast this week. All right. Uh, that being said, thank you, everybody, for watching. Make sure you hop on Discord, like, and subscribe when you can, and we'll see you next time. Take care, everybody. Bye, all. Bye.